I think that yeah. work accounts for like 80 to 90% of our marital fights. I just want to be best friends. Yeah, I, I don't want to be your coworker. Without saying the D word, divorce. I feel like we've said it before. We've said it before too. After having a kid, most marriages are actually less satisfied. Sometimes I am like, will I ever just be able to disappear? And it does kind of freak me out. Am I in so deep that like I cannot be anonymous someday? Abby's joked about like working at a coffee shop. Like that would make her happy. I I'm say like, that if all the time. <laughs> the same person. Matt talks about like the birth being like the mountaintop of it. Dude, I would take that over the hormonal and emotional shift that I went through. Sign me up for that. That's why we want more babies. Like, I will give birth 10 times. Physical pain is a breeze. It's, it's a breeze. the emotional like, that's side. Like, that's what is going on, you guys? Welcome back to the For Us podcast, the podcast for you. And for us. How you feeling? I'm feeling you got good. got your arms out today. Baby, don't draw attention oh, to Oh, I'm it. sorry. She doesn't have her arms out today. You told me today. it was weird if I wear a tank top. No. Is this a tank top? No. Oh, I don't. This, this is, is a tank top. No, that's not weird. No, you said it was weird if I wear a tube top. A tube top is not weird, but I maybe I just like you so much, so I wouldn't be really looking at. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, right. um, now so everyone's looking at my tank top. So thanks. <laughs> everyone <laughs> loves your tank top, though. Okay. Um, we are in Arizona. This is the first podcast on the road, is it? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. We're still not in our studio, obviously, you guys. As you see, we are in a beautiful home in Arizona, and uh, we got some special guests. We, we are super excited to have this beautiful couple. Uh, they just had another baby, <laughs> two under two. We're going to talk about it all. We have Matt and Abby Howard. What's up, my what guys? Up? Yay, thanks for having us. Oh, my gosh. Nice this is We have uh, followed along you guys' journey for a minute now, but we want to know so much more. So, honestly, this podcast is truly for us because like, we really <laughs> want to know a lot more about you guys that maybe that other people don't even know, too. Let's or do whatever. it. How did you guys start on social media? Because we saw you guys on TikTok. That's where we initially found you guys. But as I started to do some more research, you guys did YouTube way before TikTok. And you guys oh, yeah. were doing vlogs and stuff like that. Same with us. It's kind of like our journey. What, what was that like? And what was that conversation like when you guys first started social media? Totally. I, uh, I noticed Abby, like I think sometime in college, I noticed that she was watching these like vlogs on YouTube. And I noticed my brother. I loved watching YouTube, like okay. ever since I was like in middle school. Yeah, like actual like couple channels, family channel, like that Not, type of, or no, just no, no. YouTube in general. I like. I was a part of like the DIY era on oh. YouTube, like not a part of it, but like a viewer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even have an account to subscribe. I thought you had to pay to like subscribe to YouTubers. No way. But uh, I would like watch them like pack their backpack for school. Yeah. Or, like, little recipes. So I had like loved watching YouTube videos, but okay. purely just like watching them. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny. I watched YouTube as a kid, um, but I watched like all these film channels because I was really interested in film and video production. And so I love to edit. I love to throw in like lens flares into like little my guy, uh, yeah. short films that I'd make with my buddies in like middle school. Uh -huh. uh, my dad and I made a DIY green screen in our basement so I could make videos for my school projects. So I always loved like, you know, creating these like videos and film and I was so interested in all of it. And so when Abby told me that she was watching people that would like vlog their life <laughs> and story tell out of their life, like I'd never thought of it that way. And this was after I had done um, video production in high school and had kind of just like put it on the side. We were both pursuing theater majors in college. And I thought that was going to be what we did as our job was like theater and hopefully Broadway one day. Yeah. Um, but when Abby brought up the fact that she was watching these like these vlogs and I, I didn't know all of that content on YouTube existed. And I was like, wait, we could, we could do that. You know, I was like, maybe that could be us. Wow. So that's like, that was the initial idea. Yeah. Did you, were you like fully on board, Abby, from the jump? Um, like, did you believe as much as like he believed when he said like, oh, we can actually do this? No. Really? I didn't. I mean, what? I was. <laughs> I, I also don't think it was ever, I don't remember ever like a serious conversation happening where okay. it was like we're gonna do this. It was like more like we got a camera to film our wedding because we couldn't afford a videographer for a wedding because mm -hmm. we got married at 20 and 21. Wow. So we're yeah. like, we can't afford a videographer. And so Matt's like, but we can't afford a camera. <laughs> yeah. So his cousin so kindly recorded so much footage. And then yeah. after our wedding, we had this camera. He's like, we could make some of those vlogs that you've been watching. And I was like, sure. And I don't remember ever being like a serious like, all right, this is a career move. It was more like, yeah. I'll entertain this. this hobby of him. It'll be cute to look back on. Right. right. Even for me, it wasn't a career thing. It was really a creative outlet because I'm now that I'm like thinking about it, we had switched our degrees. So we started off in theater, but then we realized, you know what? 
we want to prioritize our relationship over careers. We want to prioritize getting married, having a family, like that's going to bring us more joy and happiness than anything else. So we prioritized that, switched our majors to more practical degrees. Abby pursued elementary education. I pursued finance. No way. And it was during that time that I was like, man, I miss the arts and being creative so much. Like maybe we could try this YouTube thing. And if it doesn't turn into anything, fine. It'll be a fun Mm -hmm. hobby, you Mm -hmm. know? But if it does turn into something, that would be really cool. And so I think the goal for me was just to like make some side money, like making videos. And so when we made videos for almost a year and only got to 300 subscribers after making weekly content for a whole, for nearly a whole entire so year, tough. I was, it was kind of, I was disappointed cause I worked so hard and I was like, man, I'd just love to make like, even like a dollar, <laughs> like I'd love to make like a single dollar off this cause I've worked so hard for it. Um, but then TikTok came along, and that's where really that's where it, like everything changed for us. Wait, before we get to TikTok, where what were you guys doing for money when you weren't making anything on YouTube? Yeah, I was a substitute teacher, and Matt no was actually yeah. Abby, so, what? I could totally see that. A teacher, like, I think you'd be a great teacher. Thank yeah. you. What? What great? What age? So subs, you can just it's whatever job you want to take. So you like no wake way. up in the morning, you're like, okay, which jobs are available? Yeah. And so I would do anything from preschool to high school. Were you the cool sub? Because um, you know how like in high school or middle school or even elementary. You get excited when you have a sub. I couldn't. I could not be the cool sub because I was way too young. Oh, so it's okay. like it was too <laughs> close. Like especially if it was in high school. I was literally like three years older than yeah, some of the students. Yeah. Wow. So I had to come in like acting That's like right. no you, nonsense. You couldn't be on their level. No, yeah. no, no. Like I didn't have that freedom. So I would come in and be like please find your seat. Like, <laughs> wow, like, that, I can't, that's so crazy. Because I was like, otherwise they're going to completely like walk me. all over. Like me. it's yeah. going to be anarchy. So yeah. I, wow. Like, be tough. Wow. And Matt was actually a finance intern. And, yeah. but what? before that, you guys, we yeah. worked at a pizza restaurant together. <gasps> so that's did so That was my first job. I worked at a pizza restaurant. No way. Yeah. Wait, yeah. so you guys worked there together and you knew each car. other? Oh, because you, oh. And you would go to work together. We were together. dating and we were like begging people to hire us together because we were like, we only have one car. Like, please. That is <laughs> we're so <team."> cute. <laughs> and so they were like, we don't really like to hire people in a relationship. Nobody wanted to hire a couple. Is, like, and then they hired you guys. We finally convinced this brand new pizza restaurant. To they, they were desperate for workers. So we're like, we were like, we're, we're a package deal. deal. And we're like, we're a package deal. We got one car and like, we'll be really good. And can you please so schedule sweet. us together on the same shift? Wow. And they did. You guys worked the same shifts together. Yes, for the most did. part. Yeah. Wow. And that was after even we worked at this like fancy steak restaurant. Okay. Um, also shared a car there, but we got fired from that place. No. Because, Both of you guys? because we, we were freshmen in college and okay. we went home for winter break. Because they shut down the dorms. You can't even stay we, yeah. in the dorms okay. over a holiday break. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, we come back thinking we're going to, we come back early from winter break. Okay. We come back like three <laughs> weeks early, eager to work. And they're like, oh, sorry guys. We, we filled uh, your position. <gasps> yeah. So we were devastated. We're like, but you said you wouldn't. Yeah. So we at, don't this, know nothing. at this time you guys had already started social media or no, not yet? No, no, no this, this is way, way before. before. Way but before. when I, I was a sub when we were doing social media. Yeah. No, no one was watching it, so no. like it wasn't like. Wow. Was your content ever around a being a sub in like finance? Did like, you did know? you ever like day in the life that it was like couples content? We yeah. Like it was of- more like any adventures we went on or right. yeah. we did yeah. like challenges and stuff. We need to go back and watch some of those because I, I, I don't even remember, but I know that it's yeah. cringy, but also Are you Are you sweet. good with numbers, Matt? <laughs> like, are you like a numbers guy? When I, it comes? Am. Oh, yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was total opposite growing up. I hated math. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good at math. Yeah, that's just our, our weak spot. <laughs> Both <laughs> of us? Great. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah that is so cool i never i never knew that so when when did tiktok come along and what made you guys say okay we're gonna do some short form content totally so uh they fired all the interns when COVID hit and, and there's no more school so right. i'm fired and wow. so i'm thinking right. okay we had been saving up money you know since since like um even when we started dating we were like saving money but we we knew wait that we get this we combined our bank accounts before we ever got married <laughs> yeah no but that's way. because we both really didn't have a lot of money anyway so yeah. it wasn't like a huge deal yeah but and we knew we were gonna get married i feel like we did that like we, essentially we were like it was both yeah of our money. like yeah. we didn't like actually combine like put our both of our names on it but like we we were like whatever is mine is yours because we knew it. same same kind yeah. of thing yeah yeah that's what we did yeah but Anyway, um, yeah, COVID hits, you know, we're, we're stuck at home. School is all online now. And we're like, okay, because we've been saving up money, luckily we don't have to like rush and go get jobs at like 
Amazon or something to pay the right. bills because we had this like dream of like moving out of Missouri. We, uh, we had lived in the Midwest our whole lives. We wanted to live like, I don't know, in the mountains or on a beach. We didn't really know where it was yet. Wow. Um, eventually we moved to Hawaii, but that's, that's later in our story. But we, uh, yeah, we're like, okay, we have savings. So let's see if this social media thing could maybe work. Mm-hmm. Um, let's give it all everything that we have. Let's, let's spend all of the time that we have to make as much content as we can and, and see if this might work. So we started off doing, you know, three or four YouTube videos a week during COVID. But then randomly we're like, let's just do like a TikTok dance. Like TikTok dances were really big. Yeah. We didn't really understand it. We didn't even have the app downloaded. No. In fact, I always said, and our family gives me yeah. grief for this. I was like, I will never download TikTok because <laughs> my experience was being a substitute teacher. And I was like, Matt, these elementary kids are listening to inappropriate music on TikTok <laughs> all day True, long. Though. That's and all it was back then dances. too. Yeah. yeah. And there were like sexual dances too. Yeah, oh my I was gosh. like, TikTok is a horrible app. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I honestly still kind of think it's horrible. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on it. Like, literally, we're both TikTokers. No, uh, but seriously though, like, yeah, we have those talks too. Like, are we going to let our daughter even come remotely close yeah, to, even, like, if it's still around at around that time, is she going to be on there? There will be another app. If there's not TikTok right, that's in true. 15 There'll years, be there will be something else. Yeah. So you... We're like, let's just do a dance. Yeah, because we we grew up doing musical theater. That we met doing theater yeah. while we were in high school. So we're like, oh and my we're gosh, dance minors. We yeah, we were dance minors before that. we uh, dropped the program. We were both in ballet together. Um, so yeah, that we, would just check me out the whole entire ballet class. I was Wait, like, people can see. You got to do, bro. Do you guys yeah. I mean, know like, what you else? Know how it is. Know what like, you else met your wife while she was in a dance class, right? <laughs> exactly. So I'm just so, like, I'm like doing ballet moves. I'm checking out this like hot chick in a yeah. guitar who happens to be my girlfriend, like. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, so, do you guys have videos of you doing ballet together? I don't know if we do. Because I, I we would love recordings. to see that. We have videos of us dancing, but not together, I don't think. Wow. There's got to be something. Something, something yeah. Somewhere. I would love to there, see that. Might be, we'll have to do some digging. Maybe okay. uh, our moms. So uh-huh. yeah. Our moms might have something. Um, Definitely the moms. <laughs> oh, yeah, the parents <laughs> but, have to. Yeah. But yeah, we actually, oh, you know what it was? Because, okay, we actually did TikTok for YouTube because there was this trend. People were like trying viral TikTok trends. Trying, Yo, we did that trying, video did too. That. We trying did that. viral TikTok dances. So because we were trying to do YouTube, we're like, ah, oh, we'll just download freaking TikTok yeah. because like we're trying to grow on YouTube. And I was getting so frustrated because again, like when you work so hard for something and there's like no, not it, it, like just like there's no benefit to it. You're like, what am I even doing this? Right. For? Like, yeah. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares. Like, mm-hmm. do I even do I keep going along? Anyway, we do this video titled trying viral TikTok dances and all of our TikToks like went viral. Like all, like all the what a, first off, wow. what a great YouTube video that like like that happened because we've tried we've done that video I think it's on our channel still and our TikToks did not do they that. did not do any <laughs> what good yeah, yeah I don't think so yeah um so the fact that they went actually went viral we, we didn't believe it dude so we like one of our videos it took a while it eventually got to a million views but it was like okay. this silly TikTok dance that we did that yeah. was that just like popped up on the FYP and so we're like oh I guess this is like what the kids are doing so we'll we'll do this TikTok dance yeah. And yeah, so we're seeing like a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand views. I'm like, Abby, there's no way this is real. I'm like, this is a Chinese app. Like, <laughs> maybe this is fake. I don't know. I right. don't know if I can trust these numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was getting a lot of traction. We're like, okay, maybe we should like keep making TikTok dances. And so, so we did. Wow. And yeah. it was just the dances. Like, it, did it? At first. All we did. At first. Yeah, I was gonna say that's all TikTok was. Right. right. It really has changed a lot. Like into more, especially like vlogs and stuff. I feel like. Well, at least, I don't know. I feel like what? back when, like, Charlie D'Amelio and, like, that, it was, like, dancing. Like, that's all anyone yeah. really did. all it right? was. Yeah. It, yeah, honestly, I feel like you guys and, like, a few, and, like, a handful of other people are responsible for kind of, like, some Making of the, the shift, shift with with TikTok, with, like, the vlogs and the Dan the Life, the voiceover vlogs and stuff like that. Um, what made you guys want to start switching it up from I, dances do you, to... Do you remember the first video that we did that wasn't a dance? What was it? I, we went back home to see my parents. We were staying with my, like at my parents' house, and I was in the closet, and I found my prom dress that I wore because mm. we went to prom together. Yeah. We were dating in high school, and I was like, I'm going to put this on and get Matt's reaction to like me wearing it. See like, if he remembers, which I was like, I'm pretty sure he'll remember this dress. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that was our first one. Wow. That's so and cute. And then, yeah. and that one people like thought was so fun because we were married now, and we had gone to prom together. And Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's the first one. We're like, okay, well, people like might actually just like not care to see us dance, but maybe just like our, 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 our relationship, yeah. our life. 
And so um, I think that was the first one, right? Yeah, and just like slowly over time, there were other couples that weren't doing like dances, and we're like, oh, maybe we should try out this other co- these other content styles. And so just like over time, we did dances, and then like we did more like couples content. We'd ask each other questions on camera and yeah. get like you know our random responses and. Um, we d- we dabbled in like the pranks a, a little bit mm-hmm. for a- for a time, um, but that didn't really last long, and it just evolved and eventually um, got into like yeah vlogging on TikTok. So I was like, wait, what if we could like take what's already in existence on YouTube and bring it to TikTok? So smart. And that's where I got this idea of like, oh, I can like vlog our story, especially with this pregnancy that we're going through. It's a big life change for us. Maybe people would be interested in seeing our story um, played out over time. Right. Man, what have you guys learned in what you show on social media and like what not to show? Because I feel like for us and I feel like for a lot of people, you're just kind of learning as you go when it comes to social media with the posting. Because like sometimes we post something, we'd be like, oh, we didn't even think about that. And everyone's commenting that maybe we shouldn't have said that or done that or whatever. And um, you just kind of just learn as you go. What about you guys? What what uh, what does that look like when you're doing your vlogs, even to this day? I think it's funny you asked that because before we ever did social media, I remember thinking like all these creators, especially when I was a kid in high school, looking at Viners and different YouTubers that I knew that were big. Um, I felt like they had some sort of secret society where they all like knew like the, the code and the, and the strategy and they, and they understood the algorithm. They, they knew the secrets of what to do. And um, I realized like after being a, becoming a creator, like that doesn't exist. Like people are just doing whatever they think works, whatever they think they should do. And, um, social media is still a very, very new industry and it's still growing very rapidly. So, you know, we've definitely made mistakes along the way. I think we've overshared at certain points and learned like, okay, maybe we shouldn't talk about that as much, or maybe we want to keep this thing private. Yeah. Um, navigating, uh, being a family now, like deciding how much of our personal life to share, uh, has been something that we've navigated this year as well. So, uh, we were just kind of learning as we go. Yeah. Has there ever been a time where like you guys have shared something and then you instantly were like, okay, we should not have posted that or you had to delete it or you felt like you felt like it was like a good like TikTok or YouTube video and then you're like, oh Mm -hmm. no, like this was not good. Definitely. Yeah. Really? Like, is there a time that you can think of? I'm not thinking of a specific one, but I can think of a lot of specific ones. Of course. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I mean, I'm sure you guys are aware that, like, because there's no titles and thumbnails on TikTok, really, that you need to hook people in the first, like, three seconds of your video. Yeah. And so I made this hook, stupid hook, dumbest hook I've ever made, Mm. which, like, got me so much hate. But I made this hook. Um, don't be fooled by me taking care of my child or something because most of the time my wife does that. And I like made this like very blunt, like slightly sarcastic, but like also serious statement just to like hook people into the video. And the point I was trying to make was that like my wife and I take on different roles around the house and like with our business and Mm -hmm. what works for us is, is great. And it's, it's fair. And it, it, my wife is happy with it. I'm happy with it. Like it's what we figured out that works for us. And people came for me so hard because they kind of viewed it as like, oh, he's being a toxic man who just wants to, you know, make his wife do household things and him do business things. And like, it was just, yeah, I learned really quick, like, okay, you got to be really careful. Definitely. Um, with, with what you say and how you say it. And what's funny is like, I showed Abby the video before I posted it and she didn't even, she didn't even think like, maybe don't post that Matt. Like, or maybe like rephrase that. Like, I know you were, I know you had good intentions, but like reword that first hook because that like, that's going to bring some heat. Sometimes you post things and you're like, because you, I know him as so much. Like I know how he is as a husband and a father. So in that case, I was like, that didn't even really cross my mind. Yeah. Right. But I think the more we're doing this, the more you learn like how to see things through the lens of like a viewer. Yeah. Right. And so um, not necessarily anything we posted. We're like, oh, I totally disagree with that. That I'm thinking of, even though I'm sure there's things that we've said or done. That I'm like, OK, that was, I, too that much, was wrong or, too much. Yeah. yeah. Um, but more so just like how to see it from a different perspective. Yeah. No, definitely. I feel like a lot of people, they don't even really they don't know what all goes into creating maybe even just yeah. like a TikTok like that for you, for you to even share. And we know this, like you have to have a hook for three seconds, yeah. like a good hook or whatever. Well, every TikToker knows that. Yeah. Everyone knows that. <laughs> and like the fact that we have to think about that and like 
personally, I thought that was a great hook. You know, and the thing is, and no, and, Wait, and hold just, up. did you guys see this back in this? It was like December ish. I feel like I've you, seen I it. Think so. I think People, so. People, it would be like, it would play the first like four seconds of my video. Don't be fooled by me taking care stitch. of my um, son yeah. because my wife typically does that. Stitch. And they're oh, like, no, this man is so toxic. I cannot believe. Like, my ex husband was the same way. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like. But see, isn't that so crazy that people will take literally a fraction, not even a fraction even a of fraction. your life, and then think that they can just put a whole label on you? Yeah. yeah. And I, I will give them that, like, that first line did not Jarring. take me any good life. Yeah. Jarring. Very, but you way, didn't think not a good idea. Abby didn't Should've think nothing of it. Through. No one thought nothing of it because, like you said, you, you know, know your other. husband. Exactly. Like, and that's oh, how we are. I forgot to say this. The reason that I made that hook, though, was because we were getting oh, yeah. these comments from people that were like, "Why is the wife not taking care of her children?" So you're being you were being because, sarcastic, yeah? Because I he was defending me. I was defending Abby because I I do like I I tend to make more of the videos than Abby does because I enjoy it. I think it's really fun so to make videos. So they're only seeing Matt doing those tasks. I love right. wow because I'm I not filming it exactly. Right. I love filmmaking. I think it's so fun. I love being creative, and so like. You know, I sh with these vlogs, you'll see me taking care of my kids. But yeah. because I'm filming myself, like, they don't see that Abby does more than I do for our children. And so then they were assuming that I did everything and she did nothing. Wow. And then they were coming for her in the comments. So I was like, okay, these people are crazy. Yeah. I, I want to debunk this right now. Yeah. Right. And so, so I made went that. went in with that. So I went, <laughs> I went in with that bold statement and then everybody came for me. And you're like, great. Yes, <laughs> well, I, like, I can't win. Yeah. I cannot and then win. it kind of became a trend to make a video of, like, how we like split up our household tasks. Did you guys see that trend where everybody's like, this is how we split up household tasks in our relationship. And I, I don't think people, I, no yeah, one I think knew. So. Yeah. It was a trend for a little bit in the no winter time. No one knew that th this was really kind of like the spark of, that started that trend. We started the trend because everybody was hating on me for, for, <laughs> yeah. for you, you guys had to prove yourselves and be like, okay, these are the things that we exactly. each do. It was like couples being like, just you, we're not like them, oh, we're good. I have seen those actually. It's like, okay. so no, my I husband does the dishes and I cook the, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Like the gender roles yes. thing. Yes. yes. I actually do remember seeing that. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy because like we, we're always now thinking about, okay, should we post this or how do we say this? Like even this most recent TikTok that we have posted, um, the dance TikTok, um, I, the wording, what does the wording say? It says like, what does it say? Uh, awkward moment when I'm not invited with something. I don't know. It's <laughs> like, I, it's something along the lines of like, um, there's this dance on TikTok. I think it's called like the Baltimore strut or something like that. And there's like this sound that it's going along with, with CeeLo Green. And, um, a lot of black people. Wait, what's funny? Sorry, I like I swatted her in the head on accident. Oh no! And so we're like Did laughing. Did you catch that on camera? I'm so sorry. I like okay, I'm, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So wait, what's funny? Are you okay, Abby? Wait, can you? T we need to learn the Baltimore strut. I need. Yeah, to know. no. Okay. Well, the thing you don't is, want to learn it for me because apparently I don't know how to do it. So no, here's the thing. The <laughs> caption says. Um, the awkward moment when I know talk, from Savannah's point of view, I know how to do this when. It comes naturally to me when, like, it doesn't come naturally to my husband. And, like, a lot of black people are, the black, a black person created this dance. It's like a black person thing, whatever. And they're coming for me. Now, the comments, it started, it got like a million in maybe like a couple hours. And we were just wow, like, wow, that's awesome. Okay. But then we started oh, to realize, that's not awesome. no, we started that's to realize it was the other, the other <laughs> side. It was getting on for, uh, people's for you page and everyone's commenting, uh uh, honey, that, that's not natural. You need to not, you're, terrible at dancing like all these things and it was just like a it now it's a very negative tiktok because of just a, a caption and the thing is you are doing the dance correctly i am i actually don't know if i no, am no you are doing the dance correctly and it's because i'm putting my toes that i know people she's don't a dancer like and she was pointing her toes and she i guess it was too proper or whatever but that just goes to show you like we were just making an innocent funny dance. cool dance not even there weren't even any like you know words or nothing that we were saying and people took took that and like put a label on both of us and all those things but it's just it's just crazy because we're thinking about those things even now when we're posting and stuff and uh it's sometimes just tough yeah because to, you have to you have to like really before you post anything i feel like i feel like back in the day like when we started you didn't have to think so much about you before posting something like, yeah, am yeah. I going to get canceled for that? Are people going to get upset? But now I just feel like people are so quick to 
try to cancel you mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. Well, that's part of the reason why we started a podcast because it's like we want to have a content style Great. that isn't so short form where people take what we say out of context. Um, now with clips, obviously that can be tricky sometimes. Right, right. We still have gotten context. heat for some podcast clips, <laughs> right? But uh, you know, the core of our audience, though, is like, no, our, yeah, the core of our audience knows our heart, and they they know us, and I love that. I love that people can just like see you for being just a human being and 100%. not view you as like some character on TikTok that they see for three seconds yeah. and um, take what you do or say out of context. Do you guys ever just like sit back and just like, I'm pretty sure you do, where you're just like so grateful for like everything that has happened in your life. And do you ever think or have the discussion of like, like, did you see yourself in this situation, you, yeah, you know, when you first started? Like truly, I feel like every single day we're like, oh my gosh, like what is our life? Right. And like, it could not be more grateful for Every th- there's so many amazing things about it, but most importantly, we always talk about like the priceless thing. The only priceless thing is time when, especially time with your loved ones. Mm-hmm. And so the time it's given us together. And then now us with our children, it's like, I could never, my entire bank account is not even going to scratch what that is worth to me. So right. yeah. it's amazing. I think, I think the biggest thing is just having freedom, like freedom to live where you want to live and freedom to work when you want to work, yeah. like I'm, I'm having to rework my work schedule. Cause used to, I would like just stay up and edit till like five in the morning and then sleep Same, till bro. 10 or, yeah. or noon. Um, I can't do that with kids anymore, <laughs> but as a creative, I would just like always, I would like film during the day and like just edit and like grind at night and Abby would go to bed. But, um, <laughs> same, 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 same. <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I think, I think that freedom is just like, that's the best thing. And, um, I just, I'm so thankful that, Abby's parents now live with us. Yeah, and how's are, that? Are able to help with the kids. It's incredible. Really? I was going to ask. I would love to know more about that because for for us. Yeah, we talked about this actually on the way well, home. From yeah, you when guys we were driving podcast. home last night, I was like, we love our parents, but I would not want them ever living in our house. All right, y'all. So I have a big shocker. Your boy is finally cooking. Savannah used to throw down. Used to. Okay, but now I'm throwing down in the kitchen. You got go my, crazy. Got my apron and everything on, and I've been using HelloFresh. Come on, baby. You don't use an apron. Yes, I do. Okay, you. Do. We don't know about HelloFresh. They get farm fresh ingredients pre-portioned right to your doorstep. You don't got to go to the grocery store. It's fun. It's affordable. That's why they're America's number one meal kit. It's honestly the pre-portioned ingredients for me because it saves yeah. so much time. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I get so lazy at night when it comes to making dinner because I feel like it just takes too much time. But they have 15 minute meal kits and then they also have quick and easy recipes. And it's just game changing because I can actually get dinner on the table in a reason amount of time y'all hello fresh also has breakfast quick lunches even snacks in the hello fresh market all you have to do is just add it on it's so time saving you literally don't have to worry about anything don't worry about it sweetheart don't worry about it sweetheart <laughs> so if you guys want to check it out you can go to hellofresh.com 54 us and use code 54 us for 50 percent off plus 15 percent off the next two months that is hellofresh.com 54 us and use code 54 us for 50 percent off plus 15 percent off the next two months now let's get back to the episode so funny you say that because i feel the same way really? about my parents yeah, about yours my parents <laughs> my parents are so nice you guys they're they're the sweetest they're probably people the best parents in the Earth. world yes no they're they are so they really are so good yeah. and i love them so much but like it's personalities and or not maybe personalities isn't the right word but i just know that like with the way that my parents are and the way that abby and i are I just think that we would clash if we mesh. lived together. But because Abby's parents are so like kept to themselves, reserved, quiet, it, it just works. We're like very loud, okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> and and they like Abby's parents don't like ever even try to tell us what to do. Yeah. If that makes sense. Right. Like I feel they know like, their bound your guys' boundaries. And I'm and sure everything. as a grandparent one day I probably will tell yeah, my parents. Yeah, I, 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 w- I probably will. And so like I probably wouldn't be good to I I would not mesh well probably living with my kids yeah. one day. But yeah. but Abby's parents just just do. It, it just, just works. works out. And you know what? It's there's so many reasons, like even personal reasons, just why it works out so well. But more than anything, my parents were moving from Illinois, and Illinois to Arizona, obviously a huge move. They've lived yeah. there in the same small town their whole lives. The housing market is very different here versus where like they were living. It wouldn't really be feasible for them at this yeah. time wouldn't to make sense. buy a yeah. house mm-hmm. or anything like that. And so it works 
all around for everybody and then we just like love the quality time that our kids get with their grandparents that's amazing and yeah. it's just like one big happy family i'm also surprised by how smooth it's been also no that's it's been amazing really good. that's no, like the I did not expect it to be this good. Yeah. Honestly, we're like, please never move out. <laughs> yeah, we don't. I don't want them to leave. We're like, I, I hope you don't feel trapped, but like, please don't leave. Don't make plans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. like, not only is it so helpful for us, like, so that we can actually get things done during the day, because we have two under two, and like, we would be so screwed with two under two yeah. if we were by ourselves. It's it's so much. I'm sure you guys are aware of that. It's a lot. Like, I respect my parents so much. I respect parents in general, especially single parents. I don't know how they do it. But it's a lot of work. And so I'm like very grateful that they're there to help because I love my kids, but like they need 24 seven monitoring both of them. Yep. And with the fact that we have family like living in house with us, it's so helpful and they're happy. We're happy. It's just, it's a great situation. And it's fun. We just like make dinners together at night and like we all enjoy dinner together. And yeah. That's really, it's sweet. really sweet. And socialize. Like it used to be lonely at our house. Cause it's like, just you guys. we're just in our house isolated by ourselves, editing freaking TikToks all yes. day. Right. And now I can walk downstairs and like talk to Abby's dad or mom. And it's like way that's more fun. That's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> that's really sweet. No, that's crazy. Cause like, so we are, we're in this kind of the same boat as you guys. We just moved across the country to be near family. Like, uh, I live, I'm from Michigan. Michigan, Midwest gang, that's us. Uh, um, we um, we moved out there. I took a job, but initially we were out there because Savannah was pregnant and we wanted to be around family. So um, we did that, and then my dad eventually moved to the West Coast. He moved to actually where Savannah is, was born and raised in Portland. So we eventually, when we got pregnant again, we were like, okay, I think we want to do the family thing. Like, and we're like, not the family thing. Like we are so comfortable with it being just us, you know, and not having to see family every single day and like need the extra help and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it's like all we've ever known too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so we're just like really used to it right now. Even like uh us moving back to the moving to the West Coast, sometimes we're just like do we want to ask for help because we I feel like we got it. We we we're understanding. We like we un, we know. Um but now that we're around the family, it's so cool. Our parents, everyone lives so close. We can just call them up. Hey, can you do this? Can you? And it's like, it is one of the best feelings ever. It really is. I've, I, we've never experienced it. And now, now I don't, yeah, we don't know if we want the family to move in with yeah, us. Yeah, no, we don't. Just do yeah, it. Yeah, we don't. Just we do love it. our great. family, but no. <laughs> just, just do it, just great. Yeah, I don't know if that's in our cards with the personality, but um, you guys working together and uh, doing a, a, literally everything together. You have two kids, two under two, like life is together. You guys have known each other so long. Give us an insight as much as you can to like what what is a what what are the hardships when it comes to working with your spouse? Um, and just like just forget the working side, just like raising two kids or whatever, too. You know, just you see your person every single day and you're also having two under two. You literally just had a baby a month ago and you're navigating so much. What is that like right now for you guys? I think um, to answer the parenting side of things, I don't know, actually. I feel like we are have like fallen into a very natural flow of like filling in where the other person, like we kind of got into a groove with things. Um, and I think we got through our first child, like going through that first year of life, there's so many things you have to get on the same page with. And the main things I feel like are sleep and eating and I don't know, the other main thing probably is like screen time. Yeah. And I feel like we like battled through those for our first and now we're on the same page. So now for the second, it's like we had the game plan already written and granted he's going to throw some curveballs, I'm sure. And he already has. But uh, getting those major like hot parenting topics yeah. settled beforehand has been really good. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely that definitely helped us. I think the transition from. Uh, one to two was I think easier than from zero to oh, one yeah. um, even though our newborn is uh, he's a crier he he does he's probably probably cries more than Griffin did I think when Griffin was a newborn <laughs> yeah. um, but because we have help now and because we also have been through this once we know what to do I know now that I should change his diaper before he feeds because that way he <laughs> falls asleep and, right, then right. and then I can go back to sleep yeah before I didn't know that I used yeah. to I used to uh 
give him the bottle. Abby would pump. I'd give him a bottle, and then I would change his diaper because I was like, oh, well, he's gonna be way happier now. Like, right? I want to. I don't want him to cry when he's the changing when I'm changing learned. his diaper. But yeah. then now he's awake, and now he's gonna cry for you know an hour, and we can't get back to sleep. So I'm like, <laughs> right, right. You, know, you just figure out how to get more sleep, which then helps you be a better parent. And um, so yeah, I, I think it's been a it's been a better for transition. work. To address that part, I think that I, Matt and I have said this. We're still figuring it out. I think that yeah. work accounts for like eighty percent, eighty to ninety percent of our marital fights. Wow, no, same. It's, I feel like yes. I key because that's the only time where we're like, it's sad yeah. each other's heads. I just want to be like, I just want to be best friends. Yeah, like, yeah. Can we, can be we best just friends stop again? working together? Like, I don't. Wait, I don't want to be your coworker. But that's part of the reason why we stop. Like. You know, a lot of the videos on TikTok that we do, like Abby will do like a makeup video or what I eat in the day, or I'll make like a vlog where I voice over it. And like, we don't, we've started to dabble back into making videos together again. And the reason we stopped for a while was because like we would fight like it. Crossing it, paths like in a creative way creative like that. Spaces yes. are, yeah. It's like, and I feel like if it was me with anybody else in the world, I'd probably be the easiest collaborator. But when it's my husband, I'm like, <laughs> okay, gloves are on. Like, don't <laughs> even go there. I don't know why it is. No. Well, back yeah. in the TikTok dance days, like, I would want to do oh, like 20 takes even. of the TikTok dance because I'm a perfectionist and Abby would get so pissed. I'm, w- I'm <laughs> one and like, done. She was like, dude, we've done the dance 20 times. Like, you don't look any better now. Like, let's just pick a draft and move on. <laughs> I wasn't. Was I that? I'm like, my pirouette was a good babe. Like, let's redo it. <laughs> Not your pirouette. Oh, my gosh. Uh, my jazz weird. hands need to work, you know? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no working way. with your spouse can be tough. And I've, I've found this from every content creator couple I've ever talked to. They've yeah. all struggled with this. Yes. Yes. And people just that thing. own businesses with their spouse in general. It's, it's messy. Hard. It's hard. It's messy. messy. Personal yes. life and work life, yeah. blending them, it can work out great. And it has many times. And most some days, it's amazing. It's the right. best thing ever. And other days, it's like... Man, I can't believe I have to right. stay with you the rest of the day today. <laughs> and then at the because end of, work is done, and I'm I'm already mad. And yeah. then and then you like I don't know have a reality check. And you're like, this is the person that like I made ch- my children with, and I love more than anything in the world. And it's like, why yeah. can't we just like love each other and just like just be all lovey dovey? Like, why are we like <laughs> pissed right now about this dumb freaking TikTok, TikTok. dance? Yeah, no, but actually, <laughs> or whatever though, it is, you know, man, that's so crazy because I mean we are an exact same boat as you guys when it comes to okay so my question is um has it ever gotten to a point where forget like something as little as like making a dance and you get into an argument or whatever but like to it where has it gotten to a point where you're like considering um it got really big the fight got like super big to where it's just like i I don't even want to do this anymore. Like, I, I want to not do social media. We've had those arguments. For sure. We just talked about this. Like, I there's been many times where I'm like, okay, let's just, let, like, you do social media. Like, I'm done. Like, I don't want to do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like, yeah, and we're just, and I'm just like, wait, 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 no, babe. We, we have to. And then it also poses the question, like, I don't know about you guys. Have you guys ever thought about Matt Howard, Abby Howard, doing kind of your own thing when it comes to, let's just say TikTok. I know you have you have like a separate like the channel, but like not even having a Matt and Abby page, has it ever been a thought of just doing strictly just your own things? Well, yeah, I think like with again working with your spouse, we've definitely there there have been points not recently, but there's definitely been points where it's like Abby, like I want you to do what you want to do. Like I I yeah. care about you and I care about the things that you like. And so if you don't like making these videos or if you don't like this, like just you should really like you can do whatever you want. Like if making you if Abby's joked about like working at a coffee shop, like that would make her happy. I I'm say like, that if, all if the that, time. You guys are the same person. Yes, I literally have been like, babe, I'm going to get a job at like a retail job or like a coffee shop, like something a cute. I would love that. That's I'd be literally happy. Abby. What do you said say? That, you've said that verbatim. Yeah. I just want to like see people during the day. Yeah, and like right. just be like normal. Just sometimes be normal. You like work hours that, yeah. and then just like go home and not have to think about work. Yes. Yeah. Um. So it's like I have those thoughts for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and we kind of also talked about every once in a while. I Not even every once in a while. A good amount of time. Sometimes I am like, will I ever just be able to disappear in my life? Right. Yeah. And it does kind of freak me out a little bit sometimes where I'm like, am I in so deep that like I cannot be anonymous someday? I don't think that's actually the case. And I'm not trying to be like, oh my gosh, like no. everybody knows yeah. me. We, no, it's, we get it though. So but there's true. a, there's a like, there's a fear, fear there. And, and it also extends to my children. We have kind of split up like 
this is like a Matt video and this is like an Abby video. So good. And um, I think there will be a day where I don't know. What do you think? How? Do, what do you think is the future of this? Because well, he I, does have his own page, and then yeah. he always is trying to get me to take over the main TikTok and just make well, it an Abby TikTok. Okay. That's what we are that's the most ironic. That to Savannah. That's the most ironic thing is because like our audience is like ninety percent female, and so Same. like people like to watch Abby just be Abby, which makes sense. Like I'm not I'm not hurt by it. Like yeah, I get it. Like definitely. I think Abby's amazing. I would watch Abby all day too. She's awesome. So it's like. <laughs> That's the ironic thing, though. It's like Abby doesn't even like a- that Abby- overwhelms me. Like yeah, uh, me a whole yeah. like TikTok to my. I'm like, oh no, like, no, right. no. <laughs> That's how I am too. Like whenever Josh wants me to film something, like just me or like, I'm like, no, like you should do it or like you should say it. Like it's fine. You do the voiceover. Like, like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna perform, babe. I, tr- I truly don't. Yeah, that's. Like, but are you gonna catch me doing get ready with me? <laughs> like get ready with me. <laughs> I've seen some funny comedians do like some dudes like Trey, do a get, Trey Kennedy did a get ready with me he did. me up. He said, I kind of, get ready with me to <laughs> go with my friends to get ready together to go. Stop. <laughs> and he and he's, going, he's, we're, he's wearing the thing. He's wearing the little like the headband. Thing, the little headband. I was dead. But I've thought about the, those. I heard. I saw one. I, I I need to make these. This would be so much fun. But I saw somebody who did one like get ready with me to go take a poo. Matthew, like, he's no, so funny. That. that that's a good idea. That yeah. is funny. But like something so silly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not funny enough to do that. I don't know. Like I, w- I wish I was funny. I'm only funny when I'm not trying to be funny. And I that, feel and it. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> you're hilarious that's when, when you it's know, an accident. That's when you know you're not very funny. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about two under two parents <laughs> and let's just talk about wait, what. I don't know. Did you hit, did you hit her again? Get ready with me. To oh. Get ready with me. Oh. I have to watch that. To get, no, it was like get ready with me to get ready with my friends. Get ready to get ready with me. get ready with me. Film a get ready with me. Film a get ready with me. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's go like the route of like uh, postpartum and just what what an insight is to like you guys' life right now. Yeah, I was gonna say I actually had a question too, Abby. I saw your. I think it was actually get ready with me. Or I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, ironic. Not. Um, but it was you were saying just like after having children you kind of feel like I think you said something you feel like you don't know how to like function in social settings and you said that and I could not relate more I'll never forget especially being postpartum with our first I went to we were at Chick-fil-a and we went up to order and I was like babe I can't order like I, said, huh? I, I was like I can't order I need you to order for me and like literally I was unable to order my food like I just I don't know I think it I think it's like a combination of like being sleep deprived like I don't know what it is but I can totally relate to just like feeling like you can't function in social settings it's like it's like I am just now getting like starting to get out of the fog of like postpartum and I'm only four weeks and I know it's gonna like Matt reminds me every single day he's like every single day you're gonna feel more and more normal like um, but the time where it like really hit me was we went on like a little date. We've been trying, we've been doing one date a week since the baby has gotten here. That's That's awesome. And even if it's just like to go get dinner and we went to get dinner at BJ's and I was literally in this crowded restaurant and I just like looked around and I was like, I don't know how to be a person in this setting. Like I was like, <laughs> I don't, I like, I just felt like in a way it almost felt like I was like. You know, in a, a Christmas Carol where he's like watching himself. Like, I felt like I was watching myself on the stage. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. And well, I was like, I, I feel like saying. my makeup is just sitting on my skin and it's not on my face. Like, I just felt like so disconnected from wow. like my body. Like, I didn't know what to wear. And then I didn't, I didn't know how to feel. And then like, I didn't know how to order. And I was all, I just felt so uncomfortable. Yeah. I was like, this is so it's just such a weird I I totally know what you're saying and I feel like if any other moms are listening to this they can relate it's just like it's like a film like a a fog but like you just and you can't quite put your finger on it sometimes um but yeah I just thought that that was like so amazing that you shared that because I I feel like I had never been able to like articulate my feelings but just the not being able to function in a social it just it's it's so true and I just love that you share that because I'm like okay that's the most relatable thing ever yeah and honestly in sharing that other people like yourself saying like I felt that exact same way I literally had never talked to another postpartum mom who like about that thing yeah that weird thing that I didn't even know how to describe exactly right and then everyone being like oh my gosh I know exactly what you're talking about or I was that same way or it got better at this point like 
I was like, wow, the internet really doesn't have to be all that negative. Like the community of women that like, I don't know, we're just like sharing their similar and shared experiences. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is actually really encouraging. Yeah. yeah. Matt, are you learning so much more the second time around about just like being present and being there for uh, Abby? Yeah. I mean, I think I'm learning how I just need to be a better listener. Okay. And, same, and bro. And not just like, I, and just like, just I'm the type of person that I like to fix things. Abby tells me I'm not feeling well. I'm like, okay, how can I fix it? Rather than like, okay, let's just talk about it. Let's just have a conversation. And so something that I've tried to do more of is like when she says something that she's feeling or that that's wrong, I'm like, do you want to talk about it? Or do you want me to like try to fix it for you? Cause my instinct is just like, okay, let's fix this right now. I want to fix the problem. But more often than not, Abby just wants to talk about it. And that's, I think it's cause usually like the issue I'm experiencing isn't really like something you can put a bandaid on. It's more of like, it's like my feelings or my emotions. Yeah, like you're just feeling sad or it's not just like you need one thing. And it's thing easy for me better. to be like, I'm hungry or I, my head hurts or something like that. But, but then when, it's yeah. like. But hard. then there are things like where you are hungry and I'm like, okay, like tell me specifically how I can meet this need. Like, do you want pancakes? Do you want eggs? Like, what is it? Cause like this morning Abby was like, I'm really hungry. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm think, I think she wants me to fix it. Not talk about it. Like, let's like, right. let's, so I'm it's like, so okay, I'm going to go make you three eggs scrambled like that's what you want right and she's like yes like i want that right now so i went and made her eggs yeah but um yeah i just i just think that's been really helpful for me definitely my my old default was like i gotta fix it and a lot of times it's not that way yeah isn't it crazy just like you guys are this is your second year having a kid or whatever it's just so crazy how there's different seasons for even just like the baby's life but just in marriage too when you're having a kid like i'll say this and i'll take this to the grave like having a kid really like tried our marriage like heavy it even before like having like that first year of marriage everyone says that's the toughest or um you know or the second year is like, the first year of marriage was dude that was awesome i know that's, well, what, no, we it, that's what we what said talking but about? everyone says it's the hardest it's the hardest dude, it was like, freaking really? amazing i'm like, like we we waited too so we're like this is great like we're gonna sleeping have sex together. Yeah. Like, yeah. let's do this <laughs> no oh bro no so i'm totally right there with you so yeah. um but yeah but I think it's when you have your kids, because for me, and I've shared this, it was so tough to cater to my wife. Like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I didn't, I didn't know. Like, you were kind of just saying, like, if you wanted to fix the problem or just be there or whatever. And we, without saying the D word, divorce, we have, like... I said the D word. I feel like we've said it before. Yeah, I think we have. I think we, like once or, tw- once or twice. <laughs> and it's like one of those forbidden, like in yeah. our, in oh, our marriage, it. it's like, you're not supposed to say it. It's also not an option. But yeah. like, why is it that when we are having like a newborn and they're crying and my wife is crying and like we're raising our voice and like no one gets no one that we're like, okay, we we need to end it. Like, where does that even come from? Yeah. Well, dude, it's like, it's, there's research on it. Most, really? most couples do go through a really hard time after having kids. Yeah. And I, I'm like a, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd. I like to look up studies. I like to look at research. And, and so with our first kid, I was like, okay, is this normal? Like, what are other people going through? Cause this is really hard. And I did discover that research that after having a kid, most, most marriages after a year are actually, uh, less satisfied like than than they were before which is really sad um you know there's it can get better and it does get better i would say for a lot of couples but like most people go through a a hard hit after having a kid because it is like such a fundamental change in your relationship right do you guys feel like you're kind of on the do you guys feel like you have found yourself again in what we're in like after having a kid like for us it took me a, a, a really long time to kind of get back into like the swing of just life. And I didn't even have the kid. So let alone yeah. you, like when, when do you feel like you actually felt yourself or do you, how do you feel now? Three months postpartum from this baby. I feel like for me, since like I struggled so much my first time around postpartum, like I think like I, th- I said this yesterday on your guys' podcast, but like the transition for me from zero to one was way harder from one to two. So I feel like since that, like just my postpartum experience has been so much easier and I already am a mom. Mm-hmm. I think the first time it's such a sh- such a shock because you go from just you two and it's everything is about just yourself. Like you can do what you want. You can go where you want when you want. But then you 
like having children will take every ounce of yeah. any selfishness you had left in you out. Right. And so then I feel like the second time around, I, w- I had already been like stripped of that. I'm already a mom. So like becoming a mom again, I'm like, okay, this is just like amazing yeah. for me. So I feel like I feel like myself, but then yes and no, because like I would love to, I haven't even worked out since having our second, which is crazy for me. Like I love to work out, love to dance, like all the things. So I think I, I partially feel like myself, mm-hmm. um, but I still think it takes, like, I think it could take like a year. What does it take? Like, what is it? What was that moment with your firstborn? You felt like yourself. Like, did it, was it just like a switch or did it, was it just like over time? Can I be honest with you? Go for it. I never got to that point. Really? Yeah. And, no, talk about it. Uh, I think it's for a couple reasons. We had a surprise. We had a surprise right. pregnancy. Yep. So I was five months postpartum when I found out I was pregnant with her second. Wow. And that was like definitely not in the car. Like it was in the cards, but how do you explain that? Like yeah. it was not in the plan at yeah. all. Our first wasn't planned. So we get it. We understand. So yeah. And, um, I think that really threw me off. I do. Rem- I like, honestly don't exactly remember the, t- the gap between pregnancies that well. Like, I think it was such a whirlwind from becoming a mom. And also I do think that I'm forever changed since becoming a mom. Yeah. So I need to figure out like who Abby is as a mom she's the same but different like a different font or something and like <laughs> that's I, good yeah and I, ne- I never got to that point basically so i'm excited to like go on this journey now and find like who i am again yeah and i'm i'm really am excited about it. it's not like oh will i ever like be able to get there i'm like i'm just excited to re i don't know and study a, myself and yeah. to put into perspective how quickly we had these babies back to back uh, the time increment, if we did the same thing, you know, this time around would be like Abby getting pregnant in three months from right now. So it's like, and I was still breastfeeding. So I feel like that also has an added element wow. of like your hormones are different when you're breastfeeding. And like my body definitely didn't feel like my own again, post right. p- postpartum. So that had another like level of confusion oh yeah no i can yeah i can 100 (laughs) percent really i can't imagine because i feel like we i mean our second was planned but even still like so i was eight months postpartum but like i said i feel like it can take up to a year or even longer to like find yourself again and figure out like who you are as a mom but Mm -hmm. also still yourself like you said so i um i relate to that so much i can't imagine bro like they go through so much like it's (laughs) like, like yeah you pushed out a baby well first you carried that baby and it, your belly turned into a watermelon. And then you pushed out a baby. And then your hormones. And then now you guys are going through so much. It's just like, I can't do that. When Matt talks about like the birth being like the, like the, like the mountaintop of it, yeah. I'm like, dude, I would take that over the hormonal and emotional shift that I went through. Get, sign me up for that. Because it lasted, what, 24 hours? I say that all the time. When people ask about, like, birth, I'll be like, I would give birth a thousand times. Physical pain is a breeze. Yes. It's the emotional (laughs) side. Like, I will It's the emotional side. That's why why we want more babies. Like, I will give birth ten times. Like, I'm fine. It's the aftermath that is, like, 100% harder. And it's also the emotional side of you that convinces yourself that it's not going to happen again. That's what happened to me this second time around. I'm like, okay, I know that I went through, like, the baby blues, the hormone crash. This time I'm prepared. I'm I'm not it's not gonna happen. But because you can't I even control it. And it it sure as heck happened. <laughs> and I was like, what the right. You're like, yeah, I thought I could do this. But I already went through it, so I should have known. But Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to find out what normal is and how long it takes. Um I'll have to get back with you on that. Because <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> um cool. What um what's next for Matt and Abby? Like what's what's um do you guys have anything that you're just looking forward to career-wise, family-wise? What, what, what's going on? I've joked to Abby. I'm like, Abby, you should like write a book because she's such a good writer or or start a cooking show because she like loves to cook and she's really, really good at Ooh. it. Or cool. what was the other thing? Or get into acting. Because like before we did social media, Abby and I did acting and stuff and like she's really good. So like I keep telling her to do that, but we'll see. If she, yeah, if I keep telling Matt, I'm like, I love that you're thinking of exciting things for me. All those things sound amazing. Right now where I'm at, I'm like, I'm just trying to get like to tomorrow, like get to the next day. That's where yeah. we're at right now. Yeah. But I have hope and I know it's it won't be too far down the line where it's like, OK, like my babies are more independent at this yeah. point. I'll still want to spend time with them and like 
do as many motherly things as I can. But then also then I'll be at a place where I'm like, okay, what does Abby want to do at this point? Yeah, like, what no, can definitely. I do? Um, so I don't know. Those yeah. things would be exciting. I think that Matt's music really excites me. Let's go. And, Are uh, you going to drop another song? Yeah, so like, I, I dropped, I've dropped. i dropped two songs. The first one was kind of like, I didn't even really promote it. Abby, like, <laughs> Abby uh, told everybody on her podcast. I did podcast, a soft launch by she, accident. She, like, <laughs> on, her, on her podcast, she was like, oh, yeah, Matt wrote me a song. I'm like, you weren't supposed to tell anybody that. But, like, okay. <laughs> Um, cause I didn't know if I liked it or not, but yeah. it was the song that I wrote for her when we were dating. Yes, literally we were in the car driving home from California Yeah, and Matt was like, go to Spotify, search, uh, here, oh my, to, here stay, to stay. Matt and Howard. I was like, is okay. this you? Yeah. This is literally on Spotify <laughs> like, public. Had, had no li- thing. It had two listens. Like, yeah, Both of them were me. <laughs> It's been up for three months, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like it's been up for like a minute, and I'm and like, and now just, you just randomly just it was like well, ten o'clock at night. I was like, I don't know if it's good enough to show you. And I was like, I guess I'll show her. And so then, then she listened to it, and then I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I should actually like write another song. I yeah. got on a phone call with a producer, wrote a song, flew out to Nashville, Let's recorded go. it, and then I was like, wait a second, like I wrote the song for my son, um, Augie, who's yeah. right here, and then I was like, wait a second, like what if what if like this i put this song in like our birth video because it's like it's you know i, I wrote it about him Genius about becoming a dad idea. and so uh it it worked out like we made an acoustic version of it because it like the the full version didn't really feel like it fit in a birth video yeah. um but that was fun because i was like this is kind of cool because this is like a piece of music that i made it's not like some other piece of music that someone else made and it's like i did it i wrote it um and it felt really cool to do it's that. really special that we've been listening to it so much now and like especially like in the nights when you're up all the time and it's like yeah. stressful this song is like we've just turned it on to like make it more peaceful and remind us like you know how special this time really is even though it feels hard and it's really cool because now it's like it, it's a way that you know how songs take you back to exactly like a moment, a, a yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. and i'm like really excited because this song will take us back to this moment and the first song he wrote us takes me back to the exact moment in high school when he first played that song to me wow and so i really like that your music is like so intimately related with our life thank you yeah and so cool. yeah it's really cool so I, i'm excited for mass music let's i go. think the go best, on tour <laughs> that would be yeah. so dope bro yeah. and we'll see i mean like i i'm gonna make music regardless like if nobody listens to it whatever like i love music and it's like therapy for me to write songs so i'm gonna do it regardless but if it did turn into something that would be so sick i like i would love that um but i'm really inspired by artists that tell stories to their music i yeah. love when the song like has has a purpose and a meaning to it and i really want to do that with my music so I'm, I'm i've been really you know getting to work on how do we get these lyrics to like really paint a vivid picture of like something that i'm going through or maybe something else that someone can relate to that's good um i just got a song back from my producer the other day that we had worked on and and i was like you know what i want to hold off on this one because it's not right yet and like i'm, I'm being particular about it because I just, I just really care about the storytelling and making sure um it's impactful so i love it bro i love that you being patient you like treating this like a hobby um that's like a great place to start that's how we all started with social media and stuff too and look at you guys now so um do you have anything else i know you hate when i do this no no i I don't i don't think i I just want to make sure before i wrap it up yeah i don't think i have anything else well you guys are the best thank you so much for coming on the podcast this was uh this was fun for everyone to get to know you guys more and uh us to get to know you guys more as well abby yesterday after you left i was like why do they have to live so far she's like why do they have to live so far away because like you guys are really cool and i or we live so far yeah i guess we live so far (laughs) i wish we could i wish we could hang out a lot because like you guys we we can't because you live so far away so you'll have to you have to um, visit often and come and come stay at our airbnb thanks for thanks for staying here and like tagging it and stuff yeah we're we're stoked to like finally have this is our first ever it's airbnb so it was a long project but i'm i'm glad we, that it's finally done yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah we love it we uh tore some things up and made this, yeah, we yeah, rearranged this your living room. set yeah. but uh we did it though but appreciate you guys yeah, you thank guys are the you. best um we love you guys and we'll see you guys next week bye